Hi everyone, and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through my attempt to grow pumpkins with hydroponics using the Cracky Method. These plants were a lot of fun to grow, and they taught me a lot, not only about pumpkins, but plants in general. I've got a lot of learnings to share, so let's get started. Here are the seeds that I'll be trying to grow. I picked this packet up at my local nursery. First thing I notice is that pumpkin seeds are pretty large, considerably larger than the holes on top of my Grodan cube. So I opted to cut a few chunks out of these cubes to make room for those seeds to fit inside. Starting seeds with Grodan could not be simpler. I'm simply gonna soak the Grodan cube and let out any bubbles and then place my seed inside or on top of that cube. Next, we're gonna move these cubes into a container with a lid to keep that moisture inside and place them somewhere in the dark. Pumpkin seeds do take a while to germinate, but by day seven, one of my plants had sprouted. There are no roots extending out of my Grodan cube yet, but I'm still gonna take this opportunity to move it into a reservoir and give it access to more water. I like to use an empty net cup as a guide to help ensure my water level is high enough to reach that Grodan cube, which is going to wick moisture up to the roots of the plant. Lastly, I'm gonna move this plant into some light so it can begin to open up its leaves. Our first leaves had opened up by the very next day and a new set of leaves was already beginning to grow. Here we are on day number 16. We can see multiple leaves growing and that main vine beginning to stretch itself outward. I began giving this plant nutrients around day 12 or 13, shout out future harvest, and it's quickly becoming too large for this jar that I have it in. The roots on this plant look spectacular. They're a really vibrant white color, which is a sign of good health. They're quickly getting too large for the jar that I have it in though, and so I'm gonna move this plant into a five gallon bucket where those roots can spread out and this plant can grow to its full potential. Here we are on day number 23 and this plant is growing quite quickly. We can see a number of new vines beginning to branch off of that main vine, as well as a number of small buds beginning to appear down inside the center of the plant. Here we have a young bud of a male flower beginning to grow. I do have yellowing on the edges of my leaves. This is most likely due to a nitrogen deficiency, so I'll look to increase that within my reservoir, but I'm not overly worried. We've also got our first sign of tendrils beginning to emerge from the vines. These small little arms will grip onto things and help that vine to climb objects. Here we are on day number 27, and this plant is really starting to grow quickly. The leaves are getting massive and we've got a number of vines shooting out in all directions. So over here on the left, we've got a pretty long vine starting to grow. We've got more small vines beginning to grow in the center, as well as a handful of vines coming out of the right side of this plant, including our main primary vine, which is beginning to get quite long. I opted to prune away a number of these young vines before they got too big to try and keep this plant in control size wise and also to help it focus on the main vine where I would be trying to grow my pumpkins. By day 31, we had more vegetative growth and our main vine had really extended itself out. I did have a few female flowers appearing on earlier notes, so I decided to prune the end of this vine and stop it from growing further. On some of my newest leaves, farthest away from the rootstock and main stem of the plant, my leaves have a almost transparent spotty pattern appearing on them. I'm not entirely sure what this is and couldn't find anything on the internet. It may just be a feature of this particular strain and the way that these leaves look, but I'm not sure. We also have our first signs of buds for female flowers. Female flowers can be identified by the round ball or ovary appearing below that bud versus the male flower, which only has a stem. 
By day 35, we've got some really great flower growth beginning to occur here. These male flowers have extended themselves up and you can see the petals beginning to form. Our leaves are getting quite big and this plant is really starting to crowd in on itself. It's becoming a bit of an issue to fit this within my garden, especially with other plants growing at the same time. With these leaves crowding and even touching one another, it's a recipe for moisture to develop. I'm running a fan full time, but still having issues. Checking in on our root system here, they still look incredibly white and healthy. I've never really had a root system look so good. It's filled up most of this bucket, but it's the biggest bucket I have, so it's gonna have to do. On day 36, we had our first flower in bloom and it looks absolutely beautiful. Male flowers should begin to bloom a week or so before the female flowers. This is the plant's attempt to begin attracting pollinating insects before those female flowers arrive. These flowers only last for a day and for the most part are shriveled up by mid-afternoon. You'll need to get out there in the early morning to appreciate these in their full glory. On day 39, I was noticing small bits of powdery mildew beginning to take hold on a number of my leaves all across the plant. This was a threat not only to my pumpkin plant, but my garden as a whole. I opted to try a homemade solution of baking soda, vegetable oil, and dish soap, spraying this liberally on the leaves of my pumpkin plant. The base or alkaline nature of the baking soda will not only kill any powdery mildew, but prevent it from growing in the future. Checking in one day later, the plant looked great. There were no more signs of the powdery mildew and the homemade solution seemed to have worked well. On day 42, my female flowers have finally bloomed. They look great and the ovary under the flower is quite large. I've actually got three female flowers blooming today, which we're gonna try and pollinate. To pollinate pumpkin flowers, we wanna find a male flower, remove the petals and expose that inner stem that has a ton of pollen on it. We're then gonna take those male flower parts and wiggle them all around inside of that female flower, scraping the pollen off of the male flower and leaving it there inside of the female. You'll need to pollinate your flowers quickly as they will shrivel up in a day just like the male ones do. From there, if you've successfully pollinated the female flower, a pumpkin fruit will begin to grow. All three of my flowers pollinated, but I removed one of them so the plant could focus on just two pumpkins. By day 47, unfortunately, the powdery mildew was back in full force, worse than it was before, really spreading across the plant. Ultimately, I decided to cut this plant down and disinfect my grow room before this powdery mildew began to spread to other plants. I was super sad to cut this plant down early, but I'm confident that these pumpkins would have continued to grow. The plant seemed to be thriving in the hydroponic environment, but pumpkins aren't really made to be grown indoors as these plants do get quite big. The crowding of this plant in on itself causes a high level of moisture, which promotes the growth of things like powdery mildew. I hope to attempt another one of these plants in the future. I think it really enjoyed the hydroponic environment and it was a super fun plant to grow with the flowers blooming and dying on a daily basis. Thank you so much for watching this video and best of luck with your own pumpkin grows. And as always, happy harvesting.